new section we're going into a different topic now this is uh, section 1.2 and the syllabus for this is understand how to use shift left approach or shift left approach what is shift shift left it's a relatively new concept if you look at the english words here shifting towards the left side and um, left side means it could be the customer or it could be moving closer to the source as it says below shift left involves moving work closer to its source for example that's the meaning there so let's see what all is uh, explained as examples moving testing closer to development that's uh, one uh, example so it's like uh, can we ask the developers to do the testing instead of uh, testing happening after development and there are uh, concepts like um, test driven development so what they even do is first the test case is written and afterwards the development of the code is done when i heard about it for the first time i was totally shocked i could i was thinking how can testing be done before something can be developed so the initial test case will of course fail and because it failed some code will be developed and the code will be continuously developed and tested until the code is finally ready so that's one example the second one is moving support closer to the end or the source of request and incident normally we have the tiered level of support level 1 level 2 level 3 can we not have all the level 1 level 2 level 3 in a single team why should have to escalate from level 1 to level 2 and then to level 3 there are some advantages and disadvantages which we we'll look at it but that's just an example of shifting left embedding information security controls in development there is a philosophy of DevSecOps wherein there is no separate security compliance group however the employees themselves are trained how to incorporate security compliance activities into their day-to-day -day activities into the day-to-day -day job of course there may be a security manager information security or a compliance manager no doubt but the employees themselves know how to take care of those security aspects and they generate the confidence that they don't have to be really instructed about doing those things so there is the element of trust between the the management and the employees on how the employees will maintain their own security controls however i'm touching on it very superficially if you go deeper into this devsecops there are a lot more behavioral aspects and tasks to be done uh, before this uh, uh, security can be handled by the employees themselves similarly change management usually have we have a separate uh, group of people who review the change authorize it and deploy it but here it's saying that the development team themselves and uh, infrastructure team themselves can decide if i as a person i can decide to change something i don't need to take approval from anybody and that's what we do for the standard changes these are pre-approved similarly can we also have some authorities given for even normal changes if it is possible as long as we have trust in the people that they will follow the procedures they will follow the proper risk assessment and then it is okay that they can go ahead and uh, implement the change and uh, as long as they ensure that there is a change record and some documentation is done so that later on if uh, we have to improve it then we may have to audit and then uh, suggest the improvement. So it's a very amazing concept how things can be done in a different way totally as compared to the traditional approach. And what are the benefits of this? Faster resolution times, think about this. If a incident ticket is not escalated from one group to another, whereas it is done um, by one team in the beginning itself where we have uh, different uh, uh, people uh, people with uh, less skills people with more skills if it's a simple incident then the people with the less skills can take it up if, if, if it's a more complex incident it can be directly assigned to the uh, the more experienced uh, people in that group also we can mix up uh, people from different technology areas like database and information security and so on rather than circulating the incident among different groups uh, all of them can come together and start investigating on it and then take the ownership eventually one of the groups can take ownership 
Reduced number of interruptions, therefore increase in delivery of uh, complete projects. Uh, what this means is it is an indirect benefit. So when uh, we are moving things more towards the left side, maybe towards the source or towards the customer, then there is less chance of being disturbed. For example, the, a user may download a file themselves. A user may fix an error themselves uh, through self-help uh, tools. And therefore, they're not going to interrupt the service desk staff or a tech support staff. So that's why reduced number of interruptions and uh, faster delivery or uh, better delivery of projects. Lower cost per incident and request. Now, this one is interesting because um, on one hand, when we bring up uh, more experienced people to uh, tackle something immediately, it can increase the cost because we are bringing them much earlier from their current job. So it has to be done carefully. We have to do a proper cost benefit analysis in terms of, uh, let's say we have a level one team with 10 people. We have a level two with, uh, let's say five people and level three with another five people. How much of them should we bring up into the consolidated team? So only when we do the proper analysis, we need to balance the, the utilization of skills uh, as compared to the, the request they are handling. We need to balance the, the team composition um, versus the initial budget and the revised budget with the revised mix of people. So some of these uh, things should be properly estimated uh, and only then we can conclude that it will be a lower cost per incident and request. Otherwise, just by randomly bringing too much experienced people towards the left side, you can actually increase the cost of that operation. But in general, it's been found out that doing this, it may look uh, odd or look less beneficial or more expensive but it eventually turns out to be in the longer run or at least in the medium term that this is cost saving. This is a benefit for the people actually, a variety of tasks that team members can perform. Therefore, uh, in a combined team, uh, sometimes uh, the testers uh, know how to develop, the developers know how to test, the level three uh, staff uh, get to know more about the, how the level one front end with the customer. Similarly, the level one staff know uh, get to know more details about maybe the design and architecture because they are in communication with the level three staff. So those, those are the people benefits. So skills improve of everybody. The, the highly technical people might improve their communication skills and the highly communicative people uh, can improve their technical skills, just as an example. By the way, uh, as part of the syllabus, these are all still coming under the eight marks reserved for the general concepts. So whatever we have learned so far and this one, and there are a couple more concepts and sections coming up, they all together uh, account for eight marks out of the 40. Going step by step in a shift left approach, how do we do that? The first step is to identify opportunities and goals. It should not be done randomly. All of a sudden, the, a senior person saying that, let's do shift left, let's mix up all the teams so that things will be faster and we will save costs. No, that's the wrong approach. We need to define the opportunity. And it's uh, ITIL recommends through continual improvement that um, we can have several inputs for improvement. And one of them could be getting the feedback from customer and uh, internal uh, from the provider staff or the user, staff, user side. And other metrics and indicators may be there to tell us um, what can be improved? So as an example, if you look at incident resolution times, uh, if they have been weak, then uh, and there are some complaints from users that incidents are not being handled on time, and then maybe um, we can look at uh, an opportunity to do shift left for incident management. So that's how we can arrive at uh, opportunity identification. <clears throat> 